enough is enough. I got enough skills. I know what I know how to build websites. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna give it a go. Point of being here tonight if I'm not participating. Tell you every time somebody asks me what's your name in front of a crowd, I would just splash and go like a red pepper. And if I care, carry on being shy, I'm not gonna get anything. Nobody said mm-hmm. no, I'd rather die. That I'm gonna be that I'm gonna be sick that day because I'm not I cannot that space standing in front of everybody. Now let's talk about uh, one of the thing that I really captured in this particular interview is talking about failures. Now we all boast about all our success. We have done this. We have done that. One particular thing from all over the guests that comes to this interview, I ask them is to talk about their failures and also their learning, so that others can also learn from that. So any any failure you want to talk about. Absolutely, I think it's something that we will end up talking about public speaking. For me, failure always been the good girl because you know if you speak aloud, you get shout at or you get a slap. So for me, it was like just keep my head down, be a good girl, do all my homework. Then when I became an employee, so I started working. Same, same logic. Keep my head down, do all the work, work long hours. Always say yes to the manager because. I was always seeing my teacher into every single uh, authority out there. So my ma- manager for me was always resembling the teacher. And I was always doing everything I was told. Then when there was the opportunity to shine a little bit, when my manager would say, Claudia, would you just stand up in front of the entire marketing department and tell them the project you're working on? Mm-hmm. Well, then, no. <laughs> so mm-hmm. no, I'd rather die. That I'm gonna be that I'm gonna be sick that day because I'm not I cannot that space standing in front of everybody, everybody looking at me, and I would just blush and panic and freeze. And I don't want to look stupid. So I always decline every single opportunity where I could actually speak up in front of people and tell, look at me, everybody. I couldn't do that. And because of that happened several times where I was given the opportunity and I um, declined it. I missed opportunities to be get a promotion. So -hmm. somebody else would say, oh, she doesn't want to do it. I'll do it for her. So these people would uh, get noticed and they would get a promotion. For me, it was a failure. It was like, I'm doing all the work. I'm doing a good job just because I'm too scared to speak up and let people know that I exist. I don't get, I don't, I I can't, my career is not going anywhere. And for me, it was like a massive failure. I said, I need to do something about it. I can't Mm -hmm. just carry on just standing. Every time somebody asks me, what's your name in front of a crowd? I would just splash and go like a red pepper and mm-hmm. which was like oh god i can't feel i'm really hurt and i was just it's getting worse and worse and that's when i tried to f- fix these things that for me was a failure and one back in 2018 after i lost my job because of a redundancy i said i'm gonna go through a series of interviews now to get a new job and if i care carry on being shy I'm not going to get anything. Nobody, they don't want to work with me. I need to do something. So in 2018, I found, I was Googling and said, I need somebody to help me come out of this shyness. And a lady, a life coach lady, she said, I think you need to go to a place called Toastmasters. I said, what is it? I never heard of it before. So I Google it. And I found there was a club in Basingstoke where I live. And I went to my first Toastmaster meeting, everybody very welcoming. As soon as I entered the room, that was the good times when we could still go to a physical place. <laughs> yeah. And I remember one of the actual members, uh, still active members, he welcoming and said, oh, hello, welcoming. Everybody's so war- welcoming, sit down, ask me personal questions. And then there was a, an opportunity to stand up and say my name and participate to one of the activities, uh, the table topics, that's a Toastmaster. And I took part. I was too scared to go and stand up in front of the, the other Toastmasters. But so I said to myself, what's the point of being here tonight if I'm not participating? Yeah. I did it. And the very moment when I stood up in front of the other Toastmaster and I was answering a question, I could see everybody like looking at me and they were like nodding and being encouraging. I was like, I actually like to stand in front of people and I had no idea. 
and that's where my journey started. And since then, I love to speak in front of people. If people say, anybody wants to say something, yes, me, me, me. <laughs> and if I could go yeah. back in time when I, work, I was at work, like a yeah. employee, I would have become like a CEO by, then, by now for <laughs> everybody look at me. But yeah, that's what happened from going from the failure, recognizing the failure and do something about it. And for me, Toastmaster has been a massive help to help to grow my confidence. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. And I know for me also Toastmaster has been a transforming journey to say the least. So, yep. And I think my audience by now is fed up of me talking about Toastmasters. So <laughs> let's not talk too much about <laughs> Toastmasters. But I think one of the uh, things that you end up saying is that you would have become CEO. And that actually will lead me to pivot to my next question that no, I know you are now an entrepreneur for a couple of years now at least. Uh, so how has that uh, journey of being a women entrepreneur being and what were your uh, challenges and then you know, uh, some of the wins that you have got you want to talk about that yes absolutely so you know the market is unstable so I unfortunately I lost my job because of redundancy uh, four times in 15 in 16 years that I've been in the UK and then uh, my last redundancy was a couple of years ago and I said to myself, enough is enough. I got enough skills. I know what, I know how to build websites. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give it a go and start doing as a freelancer. So that's what I started doing. And then I built my company. And in the matter of less than yeah, the two years, I got a web design. I'm the CEO and founder of my uh, website company. And I got clients worldwide. I'm working with a team based in New York. I love it. I love the fact that now I'm the CEO, I made the decisions, but most of all, I'm the face of the company. So mm -hmm. I speak to all potential clients and all my customers. And if I wasn't a confident speaker, people wouldn't buy from me. They wouldn't. They buy because I sell the website, but it's not like an end product that is built. Here you go. We need to establish a relationship first mm -hmm. because I'm going to build, translate your dreams into a reality. You tell me what you want and I will create something from just a dream. And there's a relationship that needs to be built on the base of that. Lots of communications in between from the concept to the launch of the website. But if you come across like you can't, you're not able to talk to people or you're too shy or scared, they think she's not going to build me a good, solid website. True, true. And so the, the, being able to speaking to people and being confident in what you say that's a big reassurance for a potential client so i have to say that this is being able to speak in public it's massive if you want to sell your products if you just want to build a relationship with anyone so i think without the confidence that i really got from toastmaster i wouldn't be able to do what i'm doing or be at this level point where I'm running my company at this good level so yeah that's what I awesome. what, what I would say become a confident public speaker is my Wonder. my thing I would just say to everybody yeah <laughs>